My first name is Charles, C-H-A-R-L-E-S. Middle initial is P for Peter. And last name is Bissett, B as in boy, I-S-S-E-T-T. -T. Good. What is your birthday, and where were you born? I was born in the state of Michigan. Mm -hmm. What town? Wyandotte. Wine. W y a n d o t t e. W y n. Mm -hmm. That's wine dot. So W y a n. A n. Yeah. A n d a. D o. T t. D o t t. And tell me about your family. My when were you growing up? Oh, I was born up in the city of Wind. I, I yeah. attended school back there in <clears throat> high school and grade school. What is the name of it? The school, oh, the high school yeah. is Roosevelt. Roosevelt. High school. When did you graduate? 19... 1948. By the way, what is your birthday? December 25, 1929. So you were born on Christmas Day? Yes, sir. Wow. So you, you're sharing the birthday with Jesus? Uh, well, if you're a good Christian, yes, thank you. Mm-hmm. Are you Christian? Yes, sir. I was born, brought up as a Christian in the Catholic Church. Uh huh. Very nice meeting you. I'm Christian too. Mm hmm. I know. So, did you learn anything about Korea during your high school? Not much at all. Huh. Just, uh, you know, just Japan, Korea, Hawaii, you know, just the principal. Hmm. So what do you think, I mean, after all those years, you never knew before about Korea, and you end up in Korea, and now you know that what Korea happened after the war. So what is it? What is Korea to you? Well, I think it's, a, to me, I just hope that the new, the old leader in North Korea doesn't get in there and muddle things up. He'll make it worse. Not yeah. only that, he's probably thinking of join, joining up with the, the Russians. Mm. And what bothers me. So what is Korea to you now? Well, I think it's a very aggressive and very ongoing. The people there are still good. I think that most of them are happy. From what I hear from the news broadcast, so I'm happy about that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry that we, I feel bad about us not finishing and pulling the North and the South together. Because I hear about the South Cor North Koreans, how unhappy they must be treated. Mm -hmm. So after you graduated from high school, what did you do? Well, I worked for a company. What company? Litton, no, Wynette Chemical Corporation. It was a shipping. Mm -hmm. They had boats that stay, sailed on the Great Lakes. And I learned many things, principally how to steer the ship. I was a boatswain. Learned to manage the steering. Mm -hmm. And I went to different ports. Mm. And I tried to get in the Navy with my experience. Helmsman. Ah, Helmsman. Read yeah. the compass. Right. And read the charts. 
and knew what direction I was going to and where I had to make. I sailed all over the Great Lakes. That's like an ocean, isn't it? That's it's so like big. an ocean. It could be out there in the water, and uh, very much so, it was very much like the ocean. You mm. couldn't see one side to the other Exactly. Side. And of course, we got into, I became used to a bit of the terrible storms they have on the Great Lakes. Is it like an ocean that it's you have uh, much so like much waves? Water. Yeah, and the ship was like this and going this way and that. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it was a pretty risky job. But I liked doing it because my dad was the captain of the ship during the Second World War. In the Navy? Not in the Navy. Oh, in that company? In in the, yes, and, and yeah, he was with the um, <clears throat> he was with the on a private sh ship, Dan, and we he sailed all over the. But really, he his training was as a mechanical engineer. Hmm. So you liked that job? Oh, I liked it. Yeah, sure. But I tried to get in the Navy, and they wouldn't take me. Why not? I have no idea. They said too many people. And I told them I had this experience on a ship. He says, well, we're, this was after the Second World War. So they were letting a lot of young men go Right, home. yeah. So they didn't have any opening of any right, order. Right. And there was a lot of ships at that time were in dock or out of the commission. So there was nothing open for me. So I walked across the hallway and, and joined the Army. When was it? Well, it was 19, 1940, 40, 46, 47. 47? Yeah. When, what month did you join? The Army? Yeah, the Army I joined right after I got out of the, uh, out of the ship work. Why did you join the Army? Because you had a job, good job. You liked it. Well, yes, I did. And uh, I was very successful in it. So anyway, that's the reason I did join the Army. And I was in occupation in Japan. And where did you get the basic military training? At the, oh, my basic military. Yeah. Well, that's a little different. Back in the states, uh, is it uh, Camp Kilmer? Where is it? In uh, that was in. I'm sorry, my mind is beginning. To, I'm having trouble. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, yeah, I was, during that time, I was, took my training over in the mid or middle part of the United States. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, but, uh, so anyway. So, you went to Japan, right? Then I was ordered to Japan after I finished my basic training mm -hmm. over there. How was Japan? Well, I found Japan not bad, very good. Mm-hmm. What did you I like? I got along with the people, mm -hmm. and I developed friendship with them. And um, then all of a sudden, uh, the war broke out in Korea. Mm -hmm. So they put me on an LST. That's a certain kind of sailing sure, yeah. ship. And they sent me on over to main city at the coast, Busan, I think. Busan, it? yeah. Busan, Korea. Mm -hmm. And I was ordered out to join a, a military unit. What unit? 24th Division? 24th Division. 
and an eleven field artillery. Mm. And there was many times I was ordered out to be up in the front lines. An FO. Where is what? What? Where was it? Where the FOs were? Yeah. Well, first time I landed in this very southern town, city along the coast. Busan, Busan, but after Busan, where did you go? Up to... We took our battery, 155 howitzers, mm -hmm. up to a town, the name of the town, was south of where the... North Koreans were coming down, and uh, golly, I forget the name of the city. Was it Iron Triangle or? Yeah, well, that's the name they gave it, but that that was not the name of it. But it was a town or city where we used our weapons to try to stop the North Koreans from coming south. Mm -hmm. And my officer, his name was General Sm General Smith. Mm -hmm. And we first, in fact, when we were going up the road, we went into him and his his team of soldiers. So we stopped there, and as an FO over the observer, mm -hmm. we loaded up our artillery and tried to stop them. But when did you arrive in Korea? Uh, I think it was May. I'm not sure. I mean, June. It was early. June? You So you were in the very beginning of the war? The very beginning. Wow. But you were in Busan, right? Busan, yeah. We got on the road and went north. North to Busan. where? Daejeon or Daegu? Oh, Daegu. Daejeon, we went through. What was your unit? 11th Field Artillery. With uh, what regiment did you belong to? I don't know. I mm. forget. The regimental combat. Too. So you were in the... Very early. First part of the war. Mm -hmm. the in fact, it was the first part of the war where the Americans were involved. So how many, your, were there any many casualties? Well, there was some casualties because as we dug in and stopped to try to slow them down, um, <clears throat> The South Korean, North Koreans came in and hit us pretty hard. We lost quite a few men. And uh, then we had to, so I moved out and I went, I think it was Tejon. I wish I had a map with me. But uh, we stopped. And what happened to you? Well, I was sent back to my artillery battalion and worked as a wireman then, each communications person, mm -hmm. to make sure that people could have their telephones. And uh, the war progressed in and drove, they drove us almost back to the Pusan perimeter. Again? Yeah, back to the perimeter because I thought they were going to drive us in the ocean. But it didn't happen. We had more people mm -hmm. coming ashore and helping us out, different units. They encircled us around Pusan. Nakdong perimeter. Yeah. I don't know them. So okay. what were you thinking at the time? Well, I thought they were going to push us in the 
back in the river, in the, in the Into ocean. Into the ocean, yeah. yeah. But it didn't happen. We continued the war. Mm -hmm. We drove the North Koreans back again. And uh, as it was, I, my job continued with the artillery battalion. What did you do in the at artillery battalion? Well, most of the communications. Mm. I would unreal real wire. I wanted to show to you that and the pictures that I had. But you said that you were in the forward observation. I was at first, yeah. <coughs> in fact, we should, I, during the war, I, I stopped them and I ran down the hill to get away from them. Mm. Because the North Koreans were coming through with their tanks. I wish I had a map with Yeah, me. yeah. It's okay. It, so were there dangerous moments that you... Oh, oh, yes, there was. Tell me about those. Well, there was dangerous moments in some of the artillery, some of the infantrymen we had with us. They came shooting, the, the North Koreans came shooting their way out. And some of the men were lost. And I got off the top of the hill and I went down the side of the hill and I walked around the railroad track was heading towards the main city which was in the south but I don't know what happened to all those guys that were killed up there mm. on, that, on that hill up there and they were running through there the North Koreans were running through there with Speak tanks they were the first ones to, we met, and we didn't have anything like that. All we had was our light weapons mm. and uh, bazookas. Mm -hmm. uh, we had that. And even though we called back for artillery rounds to help us out, it didn't. There was too many of them. All the North Koreans were headed south, and they were all coming down in tanks. Um, where did you sleep? Where? What did you eat during that time? Well, at that time, we were eating K rations. They were cans of food. Mm -hmm. You just open them up and help yourself. But we didn't have the... We didn't have the cooks with us at that time. They were not available. Mm. So we had to use our rations, field rations at right. that time. What was your favorite menu? Oh, of course. Uh, Which one did you like most? The, uh, the rations, I liked very much uh, what was in the cans there. We, of course, there was smoking cigarettes. They put <laughs> cigarettes at the in the cans, and then we had um, we had meat products and some fruit. Mm. I don't remember what that Where was. Where did you sleep? I slept on the ground. My goodness. Yeah. It was during the summer though, right? It was during the summer, yeah. There was nothing that I could do. And uh, the North Koreans were coming down, hitting us kind of hard. So I ran off the side of the hill down to the railroad track and I walked back to a principal town or city and ran into some more uh, some Ameri American men who were coming up the road towards to try to stop them, the north, from heading south. Did you have a sleeping bag at the time? Not at the time, no. So then you just sleep, just sleep on the on trench? The, sleep in the trench or sleep on the ground. Without blanket? Well, yeah, you had a blanket, yeah. You had a blanket? Well, it was the time of the year. It was a summer? It was summer. Yeah, we were getting, the most problem we had was getting rainstorms coming down. Uh huh. But other than that, it didn't. It wasn't until later in my service 
that uh, we begin to get very cold outside. Right. And you know that it's cold in, in Central Korea and North Korea is pretty bad. So we, we had tents and we had uh, blankets then. Did you move around? So oh, yeah. From where to where? Do you know? You went up to North, North Korea? No, no. Jegu. That's the farthest in That's terms of? That's as far as we got. Okay. And how long did you stay in Korea? I was there two years, I think. Two years? No, a year and a half, excuse me. Mm -hmm. So you were in Busan and Daegu and you didn't go anywhere else? We went up to some cities or towns, I don't remember what they were. Were you wounded? I was wounded later. When? When I, <coughs> I went back with the army, I got a shot through my leg here. Where did you hit? Right here. Yeah, but where? Oh, the name of the town or uh -huh. area yeah. was up near North Korea. We just went over the edges. We had it started heading north. And you were hit? And I was hit, yeah. So you got Purple Heart? Yes, I did get the Purple Heart. That's what I wanted to show you out on my pack there. Mm -hmm. um, what was the most difficult thing for you to stay there? Well, the mo one of the most difficult things is to see badly hurt or wounded personnel. Did you saw yeah. them many? Not a great deal. Yes, some I saw. We tried to get them, get them up and back to a me for medical uh, care. Now I went back because I got this right. bullet wound. Where did you go, Busan? Busan, and they wanted to send me to send me back to Japan. Japan. I said no. I said the war. I'm not over the war. I still want to get kick ass. <laughs> <laughs> you were a brave man. So, you know, I wasn't, you know, well, I think the reason it was, I have seen other guys get hurt, and I said, I think that I, I'm really bad. They, they patched, patched up this war room, and I received a bullet through my, and I said, well, that isn't going to kill me. Mm. And then there, uh, I continued the war, and, and I noticed something we're jumping from one city or town after another, going up to the north. And uh, I'm 80, 84 years, 85 years old, and I don't remember as much as I should. That's right, yeah. I, I I agree. I mean, there are some things that I don't remember either. Um, so when did you leave Korea? Well, I left Korea when they took over the major city north, which was... Pyongyang? Pyongyang, yeah. Mm. And they said they didn't need me anymore, and I said, well, fine. You I says, if you want to, you can send me home. <laughs> I don't care. But I, I still stayed with the, the Korean team and the American team mm -hmm. for a while. So what Until did you do? They transferred me out. Mm. Well, I was a combat skills, weapons, and tactics man. And uh, principally infantry. But I, during the time I was with the artillery, I was a wireman. We had a, a three-quarter ton truck and we reel of wires on the back of it. So we would pull that wire out and pull it up to where the FO forward observer was so that he could carry on his conversation to whom he was, 
whom he was ever talking to. So that they, they're the guys that watched what was going on. They saw anything through their binoculars, they would report it back and they would uh, send the infantry guys up to try to stop them. Do you have a PTSD? Post-traumatic yeah. disorder? Yeah. Yeah, I did at first. Mm. I went to the Veterans Administration, and I had my own psychiatrist, Dr. Kim. He was, I think he was, Dr. Kim, he was, uh, he was a psychologist. Mm. I, I'm not sure whether he was Japanese. Korean. I think he was Korean. Yeah, he's Korean. King. Yeah, he was Korean. And he'd sit down and talk to me and tell me not to be so nasty to my wife. <laughs> and I would discuss with him certain things that went on with me over in Korea. What did you talk? What do you see? What is the symptom of PTSD, your PTSD? Post-traumatic. I know. What is your symptom? What is your symptom? Well, I wasn't getting along with my wife. For one, I was arguing with her. I'd snap, you know. The same thing with other people. I, I had a difficult time oh. adjusting and calming myself down. Is that because of the war experience? I think so. What is the, so you, you not get along with people? Get into arguments. Right? Arguments easily? Yeah, easily. Did you have a nightmare? Yeah, I had nightmares too. What kind of nightmare do you see? Well, I could see part of the war coming back to oh. me. Oh. Yeah. And that really bothers you, right? Oh, it did, yeah. Uh, you wake up in the, in the middle of... Oh, yeah. Sometimes you wouldn't wake up. Sometimes you were, uh, and you were. Sometimes you were very frightened to wake up because you didn't know whether you'd have an enemy soldier up, up next to you. And that's what didn't straighten me out very well. That's and then the noise of artillery and automatic weapons. Uh huh. That was hard to deal with. You didn't know. Mm -hmm. There's always, there's always the feeling of not knowing what's going to happen to you, and you had to try to settle that in your head that you wouldn't have somebody over you while you were laying on the ground or in a pup tent or in a or whatever. So now you feel better, or what? Oh yeah, I feel much better. Huh. Yeah, when I came back to the United States, I worked for a company called Litton Industries. Mm -hmm. But I decided then that I was trying to get into the seagoing activity. So I went back and I joined, I enlisted my time with Wyandotte Chemical Corporation, whom I worked for. And they had, they were self-unloaders. They had booms on them. The booms swick it, slip over to the side. We'd pile our car cargo with things, stone and coal and things, cargo such as that. But it actually, uh, I was more interested in standing my watch up on the bridge next to the second and first mate. So now you feel better and you have a better relationship with your wife and others? Oh yeah, definitely, mm. oh yeah. That's good to hear. And yeah. I'm so sorry about your PTSD problem. Yeah, mm. uh, Dr. Kim, he was, was in there. And at that time I could speak a little Korean to him. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I've forgotten. I've forgotten most of it. But even when I came into his office, I 
say hello to him in Korean, and then he would sit down and ask me questions. And not only that, my wife found out who he was, and she would get on the phone and call over at the VA, Veterans Administration, <laughs> let Dr. Kim how my behavior <laughs> was mm. going. <laughs> So that kind of helped him to to counter in, intelligence with me. Right. And uh, so that's how that worked. Mm. Umapsumi da.